Well, hello. How's everybody doing? I am doing okay. Dealing with broken speakers, among a bunch of other stuff. Uh, this particular E120 was sent to me by a very nice gentleman. On the, on, I think he's on the other side of the country, if I remember correctly. He bought a recone kit from, I think, Simply Speakers, and he got a box of uh, loose parts, which is how Simply Speakers sells their kits. <coughs> and they're all exactly the same parts that I use, so that was good. But once he decided to get into attempting the recone, he found this. Because apparently the uh, cone was stuck, the voice coil was stuck in the gap, and this is why. Because uh, this happens with these uh, ceramic magnet JBLs, because the, the screws don't go all the way through to the back plate. Some of the very earliest ones did, if I remember correctly. Uh, but these don't. These are just glued together. The top plate is bonded to the mag the magnet the yeah the magnet and so is the back plate with uh, epoxy so if that epoxy bond breaks loose you get this and uh, it needs to be realigned now I've actually done realignment of live magnets before and it is no fun because it's really dangerous I've I've pinched my little fingers in between the uh, magnet and the uh, top plate and uh, it's not fun because these magnets are really really strong uh, they could be used as, as a torture device um, so what I'm going to do is uh, separate the top plate from the magnet since I do have the magnetizer I will uh, de demagnetize it as much as I can and then I'm going to have to clean the top plate and the magnet and then uh, put some shims in it and line up the gap again and start from scratch. So, But uh, this customer knows who he is if he sees this and uh, it's in good hands. And yes, I'm behind because a lot of crap that I get in here is worse than I expected and takes a lot longer. So all of my uh, time estimates are really just guesstimates because I have no idea uh, what I'm going to do when I get it. And uh, my prices are pretty much, I quote a price and I stick to it. And more often than not, I go way, way, way beyond just a recone. I think uh, some of my videos have shown that I will do a full-on restoration and make it look like it's damn near new. So, when you send it here, it's done right. Uh, I've got a bunch of stories I could tell, but I'm not going to do that right now, because I'll save that for another video, and another group of uh, five D110Fs that were sent to me with uh, factory kits that were made decades ago. And, uh, oh, I said I wouldn't talk about it, would I? Anyway, three of the five kits were bad. So i got to do it again. Anyway, okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Take two. I didn't like the first one, so we'll do this again. This is that E120 that I was working on the last time that had a shifted gap. And a customer on the East Coast sent me a... Uh, he bought a kit from one of the other vendors, which is a box of uh, parts, and then you got to recone it yourself. But when he took the speaker apart... He noticed that the top plate was shifted and the the, ga the gasket, the voice coil was clamped in the gap. So he called me and says, you know, can I just send you the kit, the parts and the speaker and have you do it because I don't want to screw it up? I said, sure. So here we are. Uh, it was a lot of work, actually, because I had to. I couldn't get the screws out. There's three originally three screws in here, which was typical of this era of JBL from, oh, about the late 80s, early 90s, maybe. And uh, I couldn't get two of the screws out because they were kind of glued in. So I had to drill out the heads and, uh, and then 
pry off the frame from the top plate because they, they epoxy the frame to the top plate for extra stability. And that's why they use three screws, I guess, rather than six, because the this is this is just glued together with super glue. It was bonded together with epoxy, but I use I use a super strength industrial cyanoacrylate super glue to put it back together and it's really, really strong. So uh so I shimmed it up with my fifty seven thousandths of an inch worth of shim material here to get the right to get the gap concentric. I demagged demagnetized the magnet so it wouldn't be so dangerous getting it all apart and putting it back together which I've done before with a full strength magnet and it's kind of hazardous but uh, anyway I went to remagnetize it and because of the height of the back plate I could only get it to go up to about 12,200 gauss factory spec on this is 13,500 and I was getting a little frustrated because I hadn't had to do one of these before. Uh, so I had to take the frame off because the magnetizer just has a platen. It doesn't have a coil. The coil is embedded in the platen. And the magnet doesn't go down into the coil. It sits on top of the platen. But this this extra depth here in the back plate was enough... Uh, to get it far enough away so it would not charge the magnet fully. So I had to take the frame off. Uh, hence I had to drill out the screws and then I was able to pry the frame off of the top plate and then I had to use some vice grips to grab the stem of the screw, the shaft of the screw, and it came out with not too much problem. But what I had to do I had, to, I had to take the frame off so I could flip the magnet over and set it on, set it face down on the platen because this distance obviously is a lot closer than this distance, relatively speaking. So I did that, zapped it, and boom, came up to full charge. So you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, next up is to uh, install the cone assembly, which I install. I assembled the cone, the parts that the customer sent me. And uh, so we're getting close to getting it finished. All right. Talk later. Bye. Talk later. Bye. Talk later. Bye. Talk later. Bye. Well, howdy. Here's a continuation of a E120 that a uh, customer sent me that had a shifted magnet. And he also sent me the recone parts to assemble. So this is the finished item. Let me see if I can get this... Uh, over without dislocating my shoulder. <laughs> Here's the finished product. Turned out pretty good. Man, I got a new LED shop light and it's got glares all over the place. Anyway, uh, talk to you later. Thank you. Bye-bye.